Hi, I'm Shankar Mala. My final project in Big Data Analytics doing sentiment analysis in Spark. Today I'll be doing the presentation of this project and some of the technologies that I have used and at the end we'll wrap up with a demo. What is sentiment analysis? It's just a feelings, emotion, opinion that we share and then we conclude how it sounds to us whether it was positive, negative or neutral. In this project, I'll be reading live tweets from twitter.com using Twitter streaming APIs. This module called QPy is an open source hosted on GitHub and enables Python to communicate with Twitter and its, use its APIs. This is a simple line of code in Python to import QPy module. The other technology I'm using is Kafka. Once we read the tweets from twitter.com, I'm sending these messages to Kafka topic using Kafka producer. What is Kafka? Kafka is used for building real-time data pipelines and streaming apps. It is horizontally scalable and fault tolerant. It stores streams of records in categories called topics. It runs on a as a cluster on one or more server. It has four core APIs, the producer API that publishes the messages to a topic. The consumer API reads these messages from topic. The third core API is the streams API allows an application to act as a stream processor. The last is the connector API allows building and returning reusable producers or consumers that connect Kafka topics to existing applications or data systems. For example, a connector to a relational database might capture every change of a table. This is how the Kafka looks like. The producer sends a message to a Kafka cluster underneath its topic and then consumer reads these messages from this topic. Why Kafka? Kafka supports a wide range of use cases such as stream processing, website activity tracking, log aggregation and many other. Here's a simple line of code importing Kafka module and referencing in the code. You can see the producer.send message will send the message to a Kafka topic named Kafka Twitter stream. And then using utilities create direct stream, we read these messages from Kafka topic. The other technology that I have used is Apache Spark. Apache Spark is an open source processing engine built around speed. Think about like a it's a, a memory layer sitting above the, your data store that helps us to bring all your data in memory to analyze and run in parallel across the cluster. Spark is designed to be highly accessible, offering simple APIs in Python, Java, Scala, R, and SQL. They are rich in libraries. It easily integrates with bit data tools. Spark is designed for interactive and interactive data mining. It supports well-known languages, Scala, Python, Java, and R. RDD is a key Spark concept and basis for what Spark does. RDD is a resilient distributed data set. It's a distributed collection of objects that can be cached in memory across cluster and can be manipulated in parallel. RDD can be automatically recomputed and failure. They are immutable. Already defined RDDs can be used as a basis to generate derivative RDDs but are never immutated. Here's a simple line of code from Python. In this line of statement, we are splitting the line into words. The Spark key modules. Spark code contains the basic functionality of Spark, including components for task scheduling, memory management, fault recovery, interacting with storage systems and others. Spark Core is the home to the API that defines resilient distributed data set, which are Spark's main programming abstraction. RDDs represents a collection of items distributed across many compute nodes that can be manipulated in parallel. Spark SQL is Spark's package for working with structured data, similar to like a relational. Spark SQL allows querying data via SQL as well as Apache High variant of SQL and it supports many sources of data including Hive, Tables, Parquet, Parquet format and JSON file format. 
Spark SQL allows developers to intermix SQL queries with the programmatic data manipulation supported by IDDs in Python, Java, and Scala, all with a single application, thus combining SQL with complex analytics. Spark Streaming is an extension to Core Spark API. High throughput, fault tolerant streaming of live data streams. Spark Streaming API for manipulating data streams closely matches the Spark Core's RDD API, making it easy to move between apps that manipulate the data in memory on disk or arriving in real time. Spark Streaming provides the same degree of fault tolerance, throughput, and scalability as Spark Core. Here's the snippet from Python. Import Spark Conf and Context to create session to interact with Spark, and then we import Spark Streaming. Now I'll switch over to the other document that provides a detailed instruction about this project that anyone can set up with all the installation and configuration guide and along with the source code. This document covers in detail step-by-step -step instruction for installing all these technologies. As I mentioned, the objective of the project is to do the sentiment analysis in Apache Spark. The whole solution is implemented using Python programming language, using PyCharm editor and cloud Data distribution VM. This describes the cloud Data distribution installation guide. It's very simple and straightforward. At the same time, you can check all your services are up and running. You can also start your service or stop your service using the for loop command as given in this doc. Second, to install Python, follow this URL and download the latest Python version. Below all these steps highlights installing your Python virtual environment and the latest Python version in your Cloud Data VM. After that, you can install all your relevant modules using pip install. Here is the instruction to install PyCharm editor. Follow this link. And then you can, as I said, install all the below modules so that you can reference in your Python code. Twitter streaming API. Here you need to create a Twitter account in order to read the tweets. The script uses the authentication OAuth and for that you need the consumer key, secret, access token and token secret. Below URL guides you to get the consumer access and the key. Go to this URL and just type any name you want. Give the description about your app. On the, under the website section you can list any current website such as I have done https apps.twitter.com. Once app is created, go to keys and access tokens. Copy your consumer key, consumer secret, access token, access token C, and then you can reference in your code. Next is the Kafka. Install Kafka using binary files. Unzip it and then run the Zookeeper. Zookeeper is key here in order Kafka to work. So you need to start the Zookeeper first. Then you start the Kafka server. Once your Kafka is up and running, you can create a topic and then you can start your producer console and your consumer console and type any messages on the producer console. You can immediately see the consumer is reading these messages from that topic and you can see the output in the console. Here's the screenshot of the producer and the consumer console. You can see I have typed message on the producer console which was read by consumer from this topic and it displays on the console. Next is the source code. This provides a detailed instruction about the 
implementation. I have two Python scripts. One is twitter underscore streaming dot py. This script will prompt you to enter the word and the number of tweets to search for that word from twitter.com. That way we can download all the tweets for that word. All these tweets will be pushed to Kafka topic using Kafka producer. It will display the tweets in the output console and also creates a text file of all the tweets that were downloaded for reference. As I said before running this script, start the zookeeper. It should be up and running for Kafka to work. Sentiment analysis with spark.py. This script reads the messages from the topic using Kafka utility create direct stream. Spark streaming will read these messages in real time at a batch interval of 5 seconds. Each tweet will be split into words and will be scanned against the list of positive or negative words to generate the count for sentiment analysis so we can determine the overall conclusion or analysis of the sentiment is positive or negative. It will keep track of running total using update state by key method. It also outputs the count with the running total, also displays the count of the regular batch interval. The order of the script is important. First you need to run the sentiment analysis with spark.py because this script reads the messages as they arrived in topic. So that's why this script should be up and running in a ready state to consume the messages. Then you can run the script twitter underscore streaming dot py where you can actually start reading the tweets from twitter.com. This is the source code. As you can see, all these modules were referenced. And there's a function Twitter's listener, which was created to read all the stream messages. And here you can see the producer is sending message to Kafka topic, Kafka Twitter stream. It displays the output with the tweets messages that were downloaded for a search word. Here's the output that describes the command to run zookeeper, start the Kafka server, and this is a program output where it displays the tweet messages. The second script, as I said, should be up and running to read the messages from the topic. And then it sends these messages the Spark streaming API reads these messages in real time. And splits the each line of text into words. And then each word is scanned against a list of positive and negative. And accordingly it generates a, a counter for it. The list of positive and negative word is downloaded from Google. As I said, we'll run this script first. This script runs for about a minute. We can run the other script now. And it will prompt for a search word. We can give any word, any top leaders. I'll say Obama. A number of tweets, I want to read 300 tweets. As you can see, it has started reading the tweets from twitter.com and I will switch over to the next console and we can see the count is started and here is the running total and again you'll see the running total will increase since we are downloading 300 tweets yeah it went up and finally you can see the output of counts for each batch of interval. This is one batch of interval. This is another batch of interval. And the total, when you do all the positive and negative, it should match to this total. Hope you enjoyed my presentation.